This broad stretch of John C. Calhoun Drive is flanked by two unambiguous landmarks, and each in its own way signifies exactly where you are. On the right, a sign welcoming you to Orangeburg, South Carolina, population roughly 13,000 and more than three quarters black. On the left, a Confederate flag. The flag flies atop this pole right next to the sign for the Edisto River Creamery. By now, you know the flag's divisive history, and seemingly everyone in Orangeburg has an opinion about the flag at the ice cream shop. It needs to come down. I never stop there and don't plan too long as that flag's still up there. It's not bothering anybody. It's not hurting anybody. It definitely needs to come down. I think they will get more business, honestly, if they do take it down. And what does the owner of this restaurant have to say? That flag needs to be moved. And if there's any possible way that I can do it, it's going to be done. But right now, you can't. Right now, we're gridlocked. To understand why Tommy Darris cannot remove the flag, you need to know about this man. The South shall rise again. Maurice Bessinger, politician, activist, and founder of Maurice's Piggy Park chain of barbecue restaurants across central South Carolina. In this 2008 interview with Newsweek, Bessinger showed off his collection of Confederate memorabilia that filled his restaurants. He was a fierce defender of states' rights and segregation. In his 2004 autobiography, Bessinger called the Civil Rights Act unconstitutional and the Supreme Court ruling that integrated public schools a really bad decision. Then in 2000, when this happened at the South Carolina State Capitol, I raised the flag out here on the big pole to protest the taking down of our heritage flag. Maurice Bessinger died in 2014. Of the flags outside his stores, Bessinger wrote, there they will stay. I will fight on because this is what God wants me to do. A year after his death, Tommy Darris and his wife bought the Orangeburg location from Bessinger's children, but not all of it. Before Bessinger died, he sold a tiny bit of land surrounding this flagpole, a little more than three thousandths of an acre for just five dollars to the sons of Confederate veterans, Camp 842. We've been trying ever since to honor honor the Confederate soldier. Buzz Braxton is commander of the group's 8th Brigade and member of Camp 842. He put it in the hands of people that he trusted because he loved his Confederate ancestors and his Confederate history just like we do. So there was nothing sinister. Initially, Darris accepted the flag and the nearby marker, but that changed weeks after his grand opening. The group flew a larger flag in the aftermath of the 2015 church shooting in Charleston. Dylan Roof killed nine church members after calling for a race war. From that day forward, all hell broke loose from me because, you know, they, my windows were broken out, but my phone was ringing off the hook, my employees were harassed. I was fist fighting with people in the parking lot. Everyone in town assumed it was my property. I mean, it looks like it's attached to this building. I know it's unfortunate for him, but me personally and a lot of people I know will not shop here because of this flag. Maurice Bessinger's battle for the flag rages on. Darris has hired a lawyer. That flag needs to be moved. The sons of the Confederate veterans say they're ready. Not as long as we're alive. 